uh, in that same framework of collaboration and partnership. Uh, today, we're announcing uh, a strategy uh, to do the same around food, but now focusing on farms to families, focusing on the issues uh, that obviously are front and center all across uh, the nation, and that's issues of food banks and, and how we could do more uh, to help support our farmers, help support farm workers, uh, and also help support food banks here in the state of California. Uh, this new initiative uh, that we're launching today is a partnership between the federal government, the state of California, and philanthropy. Uh, it's a strategy uh, that's rather simple. Uh, currently, uh, our farmers, our ranchers, are experiencing about a 50% reduction in demand, which is a jaw-dropping reduction in demand. They have excess produce, they have excess uh, commodities that they simply, uh, in many respects, as perishable items, some of them, uh, they cannot distribute. Uh, we have food banks uh, that have, on the average, seen a 73% spike in demand. Uh, here we are, breadbasket uh, of the world, uh, California, uh, and we want to address that mismatch. We want to address the supply and the demand. And so that's the announcement uh, today, to work with the ranchers, to work with the farmers, to connect them to the food banks, uh, and do so in a way that jumpstarts our capacity to deliver nutritious food, uh, high-quality, locally produced produce, poultry and dairy and the like uh, to those most in need in the state of California. Uh, the partnership currently has about 128 farmers and ranchers providing food to 41 food banks uh, being distributed in 58 counties. Uh, the goal of this announcement is to provide 21 million pounds of fresh food and uh, fresh produce on a monthly basis, 20 to 21 million pounds uh, of fresh produce uh, and other commodities to our food banks. Uh, we've raised some $3.6 million to jumpstart this program. We want to extend this program through the end of the year. Uh, and we are blessed to have philanthropy, uh, including Kat Taylor, uh, who's been passionate in this space. Uh, she is committed to raising uh, some $15 million. She initiated uh, a contribution to that end uh, to help get this partnership in place uh, and help us launch it. Uh, but it is that partnership between uh, our uh, federal government, between state agencies, uh, between philanthropy, and then our farmers uh, and our farm workers that will pick and pack and distribute uh, this fresh uh, produce uh, and these other commodities to our food banks. Uh, we are very excited and enlivened uh, by this program, and I want to thank, and I'll introduce her in a moment, uh, our Secretary of Agriculture, Karen Ross, who's uh, helped spearhead this effort uh, and advanced this cause and brought uh, some of the biggest brands in the agricultural community uh, to the forefront, from Foster Farms to California Rice Association, uh, the National National Dairy Association and bringing Grimway and others, uh, Sunkist and the Citrus Side uh, Pacific producers, uh, a partnership out here on the Pacific Coast, uh, even doing fruit uh, bowls and the like. Again, all of this uh, in the spirit of collaboration to provide uh, these new food packs to families uh, in need. I can assure you, uh, you look back on the last recession, you would not have seen these food packs with so many nutritious items, uh, perishable items and other items uh, that were locally produced uh, and immediately distributed. So we're very excited about this. It's the spirit uh, that finds the best of California uh, and a uh, spirit uh, that uh, certainly I hope will enliven people all across the state of California. Uh, I want to just mention uh, those that are on the front lines in terms of uh, uh, our food banks and the incredible pressure they're facing. Uh, I stated a few weeks back that we contributed because of the support of the legislature, the Assembly, uh, and the Senate, Democrats and Republicans, uh, supporting our food banks. We were able to distribute $20 million of an emergency grant uh, to our food banks to enhance and advance our efforts in terms of providing these food boxes uh, to families in need. We also announced that the National Guard, the first mission the National Guard uh, advanced during this pandemic, was a humanitarian mission to support our, our food 
food banks. We also worked in collaborative uh, spirit uh, with uh, partners like AmeriCorps uh, that have done an amazing job, Team Rubicon uh, that's done the same, Cal Volunteers, uh, all in an effort to subsidize uh, not only the increase in demand, uh, but the decrease uh, in volunteers at our food banks when this pandemic took shape. Uh, they have substantially addressed a lot of those issues. It's not by any stretch perfect. And I will, as always, uh, ask on you to the extent uh, you are available to help support that cause, to volunteer your time and attention through our californiansforall.ca.gov website, because the food banks still need more volunteers. But I want to acknowledge the partnerships that have been advanced, uh, particularly between those four organizations, the National Guard, uh, as the original anchor and AmeriCorps Team Rubicon and Cal Volunteers are really uh, helping support uh, the distribution of food for those most in need. So connecting California's farms, farm workers, uh, connecting to the cause of our food banks, uh, getting product and produce that otherwise would literally be thrown away as waste, uh, and now providing a tax credit to the farmers of 15 percent, uh, and providing a wage to the farm workers, uh, and getting philanthropy to help support this, and getting those federal dollars dropped, uh, drawn down that otherwise would not be drawn down uh, is the spirit uh, of the announcement today. But there are two other components that I want to share as well. Uh, we got two waivers from the federal government. Uh, one waiver uh, is rather significant. Uh, the CalFresh program, our SNAP, our food stamp program, uh, CalFresh program uh, can now today uh, provide access uh, to commodities online. Uh, so if you have a CalFresh debit card, you can now go online and utilize CalFresh uh, at scale. We start with just two partners for the moment, and that's Amazon and Walmart. And so that's just for the moment, Amazon, Walmart, but now you can shop online uh, with CalFresh. We want to expand those partnerships beyond uh, Walmart and Amazon. I'll announce that when those partnerships are available, but currently uh, we are uh, affording this because of that waiver uh, to everybody in the state of California. And I say everybody, it's about 2.2 million households, a little over 4 million people that now can avail themselves uh, to access uh, uh, that, uh, that opportunity online uh, today as well. The second waiver that I wanted to mention, the third announcement of the day, is also a rather significant one. Uh, because of the work of Speaker Nancy Pelosi and others, uh, we were successful in being the beneficiary uh, and the recipient of a pandemic EBT program. Uh, we were able to work with our federal partners on an additional waiver uh, for this program to provide up to 365 additional dollars, an additional $365 uh, available uh, under this pandemic EBT program uh, for children and families that otherwise would have gotten the benefit of reduced or free breakfast and lunch in our public school system. Because we shut down the schools, still doing learning, distance learning at home, but the physical schools are shut down, uh, those meals uh, with a universe of uh, roughly 3.8 million children that are eligible for those programs, uh, those uh, programs are not providing, in every case, uh, those meals. And so this pandemic EBT program will make available a universe of up to $1.4 billion for 3.8 million eligible families. Uh, again, that's the universe of possible uh, to begin uh, to utilize those dollars uh, from that CARES Act uh, to advance their nutritional needs. Uh, so we think that's a significant thing. Uh, I couldn't be more pleased and proud of the work that Kim Johnson's done at the Department of Social Services to help organize and set up that program. Uh, the framework for that eligibility is about a 64-day uh, period from March to uh, middle of June. Uh, but the universe of, uh, of available dollars is rather large, and we just want to make sure it's socialized, and we're doing everything in our power to get that information out there uh, and, of course, encourage others 
uh, that may know people that fall into that category of being eligible for free or reduced breakfast and lunch programs uh, to know uh, that these dollars are available for, for them uh, through the EBT program. Uh, and we're going to do our best to get them in people's pockets because we deeply recognize uh, people's food insecurity, not just their economic insecurity. Uh, and we don't want to exacerbate uh, that uh, to the extent we can. So uh, partnerships and our food banks, partnerships with our farms and ranchers, partnerships uh, with local producers uh, to help local food banks, uh, partnerships in terms of philanthropy and volunteers, uh, people doing more to create more access and opportunity, and not just in person, but now also online to draw down eligible dollars, federal dollars in the CalFresh program, uh, and now this broader waiver for our kids in public schools. And so uh, I'm very proud and very pleased uh, to be able to make these announcements today. It's the spirit of our times, the spirit of California. What often takes a year, now we need to do in months. What takes a month, we now need to do in weeks. What takes weeks, we need to do in days. And what we used to do in days, we need to do in hours. And I recognize uh, every day I come here making announcements, also following up on previous announcements and in metrics and in marking moments. Uh, I realize it can be overwhelming, uh, but that's the moment we're living in. You can't just do one thing at a time. You've got to do many things at a time. And we're dealing with a pandemic. We're dealing with a crisis. It requires a focus. It requires an intentionality. It requires people doing things they never imagined possible, uh, even just two months ago. I'm just incredibly proud of everybody doing what they can, uh, as we say, to meet this moment. And so one of them, I'll just offer the mic here in a moment, uh, is our Secretary of Agriculture, who has been actually fighting for some of these programs uh, for years. Since my days as Lieutenant Governor, I heard her talk about these programs. And again, sort of proving the point, in just a few weeks, she was able to put something together that she's been talking about uh, for years, our Secretary of Agriculture. Thank you, Governor, um, and thank you for your leadership. We appreciate your support. We appreciate everyone's support for really looking for California-grown product wherever they might be. Um, our farmers this year have gone through quite a shock wave like all of us have, uh, but they're working every day to continue the kind of bountiful, nutritious productivity that is a hallmark of California. We are blessed to have the farmers and ranchers and farm workers that we have who have made us the number one agricultural state and the leader in our tree nuts, in our dairy, in our fruits and vegetables. I like to tell people that if you've had a salad today, there's a 50-50 chance all of that product in that salad came from the great state of California. But the shock to closing down food service has ramifications for how we all shop and eat these days. 50% of our food dollars are spent in the food service arena, no longer in retail like it used to be. And that has backed up product. And because it is so perishable, some of it has just come out of the ground, destined to go across the country. We had a program that was in place because of the foresight of tree fruit growers working with Second Harvest out of Oakland 15 years ago to say at any time of the year, we have markets that are not absorbing all of our crop, but we don't want it to go to waste. We want the citizens of California to have access to that healthy food. They ran a pilot program that led to the California Association of Food Banks developing the Farm to Family program. I am proud that when I was a member of the State Board of Food and Agriculture, we created a partnership to make sure that we could take this program statewide and use it to prevent waste to use it to get all that is good that we grow in this state to the citizens of this state. It is a highly developed network. It has logistics like any other food distributor does. It has four regional coordinators that go out and solicit donations from our growers and our ranchers. Um, they get, take straight donations, and oftentimes, if there's just not enough money to cover the farmer's cost of harvesting that, they will pay a portion of the harvest costs to be able to get it transported into the central food bank so it can be repackaged and distributed up and down the state to the 41 food banks that are serving all 58 counties. It's a remarkable program, and I believe because we had it in place, we were able to prevent 
um, extensive food waste that was bound to happen because of the suddenness of the change of our economy and our buying habits. Um, I also want to thank the people on our state board who have a standing task force around food banks and food insecurity. Um, they are meeting, even as we are here today, um, discussing not only the short-term way to respond to the tremendous need of our citizens, but also what do we have in place long-term to be able to ensure that every child, every senior citizen, every family has access to healthy California-grown fruits, vegetables, tree nuts, poultry, beef, we have it all, all 400 commodities. I'm looking forward to working with you, Governor, to expanding this program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Secretary. As I say, uh, Secretary Ross has been working on this program for years. It's a very important program, but it's never scaled to the extent uh, now it will. Uh, I noted 128 participants. Uh, she has already identified over 200 uh, additional farmers and ranchers that now want to participate in this program. And because of this jump start, uh, we believe it will substantially and significantly expand in real time. Uh, and thanks to her leadership, uh, I'm confident that will take shape to the benefit of hundreds of thousands of families all up and down the state uh, will have these quality opportunities to get uh, America's finest uh, produce, uh, some of the finest uh, citrus, well, I won't go through the list and dairy and rice, but uh, you get the picture. Uh, and we're very, gra uh, very, very grateful uh, that people will be getting these food boxes. And by the way, just what it's worth, I say food boxes. And then we're literally organizing these in boxes. That $20 million emergency grant, about 900,000 of these boxes uh, went out. It provides uh, a family of three or four up to three to four days of food. So it's not just canned items, it's again all of these other perishable items uh, that are fresh uh, and ready to be consumed uh, that otherwise in a supply chain where market demands dropped in half uh, would otherwise, as we said, go to waste. And so uh, that's the importance, the architecture of this program and, and power uh, of this uh, program as well. Uh, let me just extend, as we do uh, daily, a little bit of update before we open it to questions uh, from folks uh, on a number of key issues and indicators in this state. Uh, yesterday, we talked about uh, a number of indicators and talked about uh, those that are, we believe are beginning to turn green, some that are yellow, some that are still red. We did a deeper dive yesterday as it relates to businesses and schools, a little bit on child care facilities. We talked about moving from this phase that we define as phase one into phase two in a matter of weeks, not months. And we talked about phase three and four uh, being months, not weeks. Uh, one of the critical uh, indicators uh, that is prevalent in all uh, of our discussions is the number of people whose lives have been lost to this pandemic, a number of people hospitalized, number of people in our ICUs. Uh, I mentioned last week we started to see a record number of deaths in the state of California. I began this week by uh, announcing uh, that tragically we had lost 40 Five lives on Monday, 54 lives yesterday, uh, about half of the daily number of families that have been torn apart because of this virus compared to the prior week. Uh, unfortunately, today it slipped back slightly up to 78 uh, families uh, that have lost a loved one. And so, again, we monitor this daily. It tends to be the lagging indicator, but it's just a reminder that we're not out of the woods, a reminder of the importance of the stay-at-home orders, the reminder of the importance and potency and power you have as an individual uh, in terms of physically distancing from others and continuing to practice social distancing. Accordingly, uh, while we have seen the number of hospitalized uh, patients uh, flatten and become relatively stable in the state, uh, I mentioned yesterday uh, that it went up modestly. Today, uh, it went up yet again modestly, about 1.2 percent, still within the margin of stability, uh, but again, not where we want to see those numbers. We don't want to just see a stable flat curve. We want to see that curve uh, decline significantly, 0.4 percent decline in the number of, or rather, 0.4% increase from 
a decline yesterday, a modest decline uh, in the ICUs. But we certainly are seeing stability in our ICUs, and that allows our ventilation inventory to be now north of 10,500. Uh, that's just within our 416 hospitals. Uh, and in addition to that, our own state capacity in terms of our reserves uh, and those that we have obviously lent uh, to other states across the country. Uh, so again, encouraging, but by no stretch of the imagination where we ultimately need to see those numbers go, and that is sustained decrease, uh, but certainly still within the frame uh, that it's been over the course of the last few weeks. I want to update you just briefly uh, on the incredible call volume. I've every day or every other day updated you on the work we're trying to do to improve your experience and your capacity of access and distribution uh, of benefits and funds to our unemployment insurance system. Uh, 3.7 million people now have filed for unemployment insurance just since uh, March 12th. Uh, they have distributed now just shy of over $6 billion, not just shy. They have distributed over $6 billion of benefits, $1.2 billion just yesterday. Just in a 24-hour period, they were able to distribute $1.2 billion. We saw, not surprisingly, a spike in applications yesterday. We saw about 235,000 people apply for unemployment insurance and the new PUA program. That's a pandemic unemployment assistance uh, for people who are self-employed, uh, people who are independent contractors, gig workers, and the like. That was the first day uh, that we uh, had that system operational uh, for PUAs. We were able to unpack those numbers, uh, and it's roughly 190,000 individuals. Uh, the substantial portion of that increased uh, volume uh, was in that PUA category. I am deeply aware uh, that many of you uh, tried to access that system online, in person, uh, and struggled to get in. Every day, and I was very sober about this last week, sober about it yesterday, in terms of addressing the fact that this is day one yesterday, now day two, uh, that we are getting our arms around this again unprecedented volume. You went from 2,500 applications a day just a few months ago, all in, just yesterday, 235,000 applications. Not an excuse. We have to meet the moment. We have to provide more support. Uh, and I mentioned the chat bots that we're putting up and the new texting technology. I talked about the 1,340 people that we hired and repurposed to help support the call volume, the extension of the hours seven days a week. 8 to 8 p.m., and also talked about the additional 600 staff uh, that we're putting on this and the new business uh, uh, strategies uh, in terms of how we conduct ourselves and how we are able to answer questions uh, much more uh, aggressively and forthrightly, including some of the eligibility changes. Uh, they're all part of loosening uh, the capacity uh, and our ability uh, to deliver uh, on your expectations and what uh, you deserve uh, as people that are fearful about their economics and fearful about their ability to just buy food, pay for rent, support their children, support their family. So uh, we are making progress, uh, and those numbers uh, are bearing fruit, over $6 billion, $1.2 billion uh, just yesterday, averaging a little over a billion dollars in the uh, last number of days each day, 1.2 again just yesterday. PUAs now finally coming online, uh, and the turnaround on those um, is well within not the, the 21 days for unemployment insurance, uh, but within a seven-day period, 24 to 48 hours for those uh, overwhelming majority of people uh, that have debit cards, those that without one uh, will probably be a seven-day period, but well uh, uh, within, uh, we believe, our capacity to deliver, though I'll, I'll be honest and forthright in terms of updating you daily on those numbers as well. Uh, one other number of importance, uh, and that is the continuing progress that will be made um, in uh, our efforts to provide uh, homes for the homeless uh, that are in congregate facilities that are otherwise vulnerable to exposure of COVID-19 uh, or have tested positive or have compromised, compromised immune systems. Uh, we have now well in excess uh, of 12,000.
12,500. In fact, it's 12,603 uh, hotel rooms have been acquired now in the state. Over 1,200 of those trailers in addition to those rooms have been distributed all across the state. Um, and uh, we have uh, thousands and thousands of individuals uh, that now have the dignity of a key lock uh, and a door. Uh, in a place, at least for the moment, to call home because of Project Room Key. And I just want to thank everybody for putting together a program in just a few weeks uh, and getting this program up and running, including the people that make it work. And those are the three meals a day that are also delivered to the doors of people that are participants in Project Room Key uh, through Chef Jose Andres uh, and World Central Kitchen and the incredible work they've done to partner with us and provide uh, three meals a day for those vulnerable Californians as well. So trying to do many things at once, uh, trying to do all of it in a condensed period of time. All of these things require partnership. All of these things require collaboration, capacity. Uh, and uh, again, I just want to express deep gratitude for all of our local elected officials, our state and federal officials uh, that have helped all of us meet uh, the guidelines and uh, begin to process uh, many of these programs concurrently uh, as we work our way through uh, this pandemic. And so that's broad strokes. Uh, the updates on the numbers, I'll just mention one final one before I open up uh, to questions, and that's testing always important. Um, we'll update you tomorrow a little bit more on contact tracing and our workforce and our new partnerships uh, that we're forming. But on testing, uh, we broke, at least from my perspective, an important threshold. Uh, again, we started 2,000 tests a day in March. March was just last month. Uh, April, we said by the end of April, we'll go from 2,000 to 25,000 every day. Uh, we are almost there. We've been averaging a little over 20,000 a day, 25,000 plus yesterday, over now 600,000, 603,000 plus tests uh, so far in the state of California. And I mentioned yesterday the new partnerships uh, with these end-to-end -end tests that will focus disproportionately on rural California and underserved parts of our state, uh, particularly in black and brown communities in this state. I mentioned that OptumServe, 80 sites, all of them will be operational uh, by Monday. Uh, they assure me of that. We'll test that over the weekend, but they're getting sites up in Shasta and Sutter, uh, other sites, Humboldt, that we announced a few days ago. Uh, and then we're seeing Verily, uh, a separate contract, uh, do the same in some of our inner cities as well. So it's not, again, the test numbers. It's who we're testing and how we're addressing socioeconomics justice issues uh, and doing more uh, to make sure that we are, uh, well, that we have the right information as it relates to the impact on this virus uh, on all of our diverse communities up and down the state of California.